My name is Christina and I'm so excited to have teamed up with Glowforge to show you all how I make my custom wooden map sides. About two years ago, I decided to take my art to the next level. I bought some power tools as well as a Glowforge so that I could make some really awesome custom wooden art. But one day I had this really great idea to make a custom map for my cousin who lived in Manhattan. I was so amazed at how beautiful and amazing it came out. And I love the way that the Glowforge has been able to help me be creative and make these special gifts for everybody. So today's your lucky day because I'm gonna be showing you step-by-step step how I create these beautiful custom wooden maps. I'll be showing you everything from from how I choose the location to how I create the cut file in a design program and then how we're gonna finish it off with this beautiful wooden frame. So let's get started. Now I just want to deconstruct this to give you a better idea of why we're designing it the way that we are. So this piece is the back layer. This is the one that we stained blue to be the water. But it's also fun if you want to add a custom engraved photo or anything cute that you could think of that you know your customer will love. The next layer is our land. This is going to be all the cutout of the land as well as all of the scored lines with the border around it, of course. This is the layer that's going right on top of the land and this is all of the more main roads that we decided to make three-dimensional. And the piece that goes on top is this border with the engraved name of the location or whatever you choose to add there. That's completely custom. So the first thing that you have to do in order to create your map is get your reference photo. So I'm going to head over to my computer and show you what website I use to create my maps. Oh my God, I forgot to turn around. In order to create my maps. So today the website that we're going to be using is called MapStyle with Google.com. This is a website that uses Google Maps, but it allows you to stylize your maps. So we're going to be making a map of Bristol, Rhode Island for a couple that met right at Robert Williams University over here. Um, so I want to make sure I know where that is so I can put it and focus it in the map. So we're going to turn the labels off on this left hand side because that is just a mess and we don't want that. Now to focus on the roads, I'm gonna go down to more options here at the bottom. And here you can see all of the things that you can highlight. I'm gonna go over to road and I'm gonna click on the one that says road. You're gonna go over to all and here you're gonna see that you can add the color. So let's pop on the color so you see what it looks like and it actually highlights all the roads for us. But to make it a little bit less messy, I'm going to make it black. Now that is all you have to do in this program. You can mess around with zooming in and out depending on how much detail you want. And then all I'm going to do is collect a screenshot of it in the size that I know I want my map to be in. And then we're ready to go on to the next program. So now we have our screenshot of our map and the next thing that we're going to do is make it into a file that the Glowforge can cut and score. You are welcome to use this photo to engrave it on your Glowforge. However, I like the thinner lines when the Glowforge scores it. So I'm going to show you how we do that using an app called Vectornator, which is completely free to use. So I'm going to hop onto my iPad and show you how it's done. So I just imported the picture of our map into Vectornator. The first thing we're gonna do is go to the squares stacked on top of each other. This is our layer tab. We're going to create a new layer and this layer is going to be for the cut file of our land. I'm gonna go over to the paintbrush and I'm gonna change the color to red. This is just the color that I use. You can choose whatever color you'd like. And then over here on the left hand side, there's this pencil tool and this just adjusts the smoothness, but essentially how this pencil tool works you can just trace over the map like so which I'm doing a little sloppily at the moment but you can do a little bit better and that is going to immediately create it into a cut line or a score line so for this first layer we're just gonna completely outline the shape that we want the land to be Keep in mind when you're creating the waterways, you don't wanna do anything that's too thin like this area. So if you're making the map kind of on the smaller side, you'll actually want to just ignore that area for now because the laser head's gonna to be too close together. 
So since it's a little bit smaller, we can just ignore it. But for the bigger waterways, feel free to get in there and create. So I'm just going to trace over all of the land and this will create the file that we're gonna have cut. So once you outline all of your pieces of land and all of your islands, we're going to do this same thing, except we're now going to do it for the roads. So I'm gonna create a new layer that's gonna be for our roads. I'm also going to make it a different color. And I'm gonna be doing the same thing where I'm just pretty much tracing over the roads. But as a little tip, instead of using the pencil tool for this, I like to use this tab right above it, which is a pen tool. And what you can actually do with this is just tap the different points you wanna to go to. Using this pen tool is an easy way to create a straight line, whereas the pencil tool is perfect for rounded and like obscure roads areas like this one. This area is a little bit more curved, so I'll probably use the pencil tool for that. And then we can grab the pen tool for that straight line. So just go through and retrace each of the lines Having you do this yourself also just makes sure that it's super accurate. Now that you kind of know how to trace all of the roads to be scored, I'm gonna create a new layer and we're gonna want to cut out these thicker roads. So this is how I differentiate which roads are gonna be cut versus scored. These roads are a little bit lighter and obviously thinner, whereas some more of like these roads are thicker. So those thicker roads are going to be the ones that we cut out. So because we want this to be cut, we can't just create a single line. We actually need to create a line on both sides of the road so that it cuts it out and doesn't just make one cut line. I do this by just tracing the outline of all of these roads. We are creating essentially the two lines that it's going to use to cut out these roads. So once you're done, you can export this entire thing as an SVG and I'm gonna put it back on my computer just to edit it a little bit more so that it's the correct size and then we'll be ready to cut. So I just exported our SVG from Vectornator. We have one more program that we're gonna use before it is ready to cut and score, and that is going to be Inkscape. I'm gonna hop back over onto my computer and show you how we're going to size our map so that we can just import it into the Glowforge and it'll be ready to go. So I started on Inkscape by creating two separate boxes. Remember that these map pieces are all going to be layered one on top of each other. So when I create these templates to input the maps, it's important to have two boxes. This red box is the box that is going to be the size of the map. So that's what's gonna be cut out as the main size. And this inside box is more of a reference line for the moment, and I will show you why. Make sure they're two separate colors and make sure they're sized appropriately to be cut into the glow for it. So you don't want this to be any bigger than 12 inches. Next, I am just going to plop in the SVG that we just created on Vectornator. So I'm gonna size this to fit into my reference line. So now that it is within the reference line, we are going to go at the top of the screen where it says objects, and we're gonna ungroup the objects. So now each of the layers that we did in Vectornator are separated from each other. So click the water and just delete it, and we are left with all of the different pieces for our map. We have two layers here that we're gonna create. One is going to be the land and the score roads, and the other one is going to be the three-dimensional roads. So the way it's being cut out right now, the water wouldn't actually be cut out of this layer because this, remember this line is just for reference. This is not an actual cut line. Only the red are the cut lines at the moment. So we wanna be able to cut the water out so we can see it underneath. I'm going to grab the pen tool and we are going to create a cut line over the reference line. 
like that. Keep going with this over all of the pieces that are going to be water. So make sure to save just this part. Now once this is saved, I'm going to actually undo everything that we did to get back to the part where the 3D road is back on the map. Because remember, we need everything to be lined up perfectly. So I like to do everything in one file so that way I can just undo it and make sure that it is always in the right place. Now that we have the roads back in the right place, we no longer need the other scorable roads and we no longer need the land. So we're gonna go back in again and do the same thing that we just did with the land and the water. So we have our green roads, which are going to be attached to our border. So all of these intersections will be cut because this black line is going to be cut and this green line is going to be cut. I'm going to save this again as a separate image and then we're ready to just move all of our files over to the Glowforge app. Today I'm going to be using some proof grade medium maple plywood. I love using maple wood. I think it's a beautiful semi hardwood as well as I love the medium thickness on this one. It adds a little bit of dimension to the maps without them being too thick. Okay, so I just opened up the Glowforge app. These are just little icons that you can put on top of your map to represent places maybe where people met or where their first home is. So now I just imported our land. We are going to set each function to either cut or score. So remember, we are going to cut the outside because that's going to be the size. We're going to cut all the land and we are going to set all of these lines on the inside to be scored. So that's already set to be cut. We want all these jagged lines to be cut because that's where our water is going to be. We want these lines to be scored. And remember, I'm using proof grade material, so it's already putting in the settings for me. These lines up here are going to be need to be ignored so we just need to find which one it is and it's that one so now you can see that that's dotted like that that means that's not going to be cut that is perfect that means that this piece of land is going to be connected to that border which is exactly what we want so next I'm importing the roads ignore the inner square here so just double check before you're ready to cut that it is a dashed line and not a solid line. And now the road is ready to be cut. So I just imported our rectangle that is going to be our water and it is already set to cut. So it's pretty much ready to go. Just remember that we want the backer of the water to be a little bit bigger than all of our other pieces. And I'm going to do one more here, which is going to just be the frame and the very top layer that we're going to be doing is a frame. This is the only time we're going to be cutting the reference line out. Um, so I have set both of them to cut in just a separate program. You could use like a Word doc for this. I just took a screenshot of the text that I'm going to be using for the map. I like to engrave the text at the bottom, make sure it is centered, and set to engrave using the sidebar. And now this is all ready to go. <laughs> so I just imported all of our files into the Glowforge app. The Glowforge is on and ready to go. So we're gonna hit that magic button and let's watch a print. Now we're gonna take the blank rectangle that we cut and this is gonna be the water so you can paint it or stain it but I like to stain it and I'm going to be using my favorite blue stain which is Royal Pine and you can pick that up at your local hardware store. Ugh. All right, 
right? I got all my pieces laid out, so now it's time to get to gluing. I'm using my go-to favorite glue, which is Tight Bond. <laughs> I hate my life. <laughs> I'm going to be using my favorite glue, which is Tight Bond products, but you can use any sort of Gorilla glue or any Stronghold glue that you have. And I'm just going to glue it. I have nothing else to say here. We are going to glue it down and hold it for a few seconds. Make sure it's nice and flat. Make sure it's fairly in the center of the backer piece. I'm gonna weigh it down with my dead plant and a glass of water that was nearby. Okay, and now we're gonna glue down the little islands. So now everything is glued up, but there's still one last little piece that we're gonna add and we're going to put it in a location where the couple met each other. Now that everything is officially glued down, we are ready to frame it. Okay, so now the next thing that we're going to do is make a frame and I'm going to be using some three quarter by three quarter inch pine wood. We are actually going to use this very fancy miter box. So if you're not familiar with what a miter frame is, it is when the wood is cut like this at a 45 degree angle and it's going to meet up with another piece of wood to create that perfect picturesque frame. This fancy piece of red plastic helps us create angles for us to cut with a handsaw. The 45 degree angle is this one right here. It's usually always the last one. So when you're making your miter frame, this is what you want your final piece to look like. You want there to be a 45 degree angle pointing outwards on each side. So we need to create the frame to be around the edges like this. So I have already started by cutting one of my 45 degree angles. This bottom corner needs to line up with the edge of the map over here. Just gonna put a little mark on the other side. This side needs to go out that way and we're ready to cut it. to do now is to build the frame and I am first going to just put a layer of glue for some extra reinforcement. We can't just shoot nails through the layers um, otherwise the wood will split and it'll be just an absolute disaster. So I flipped it around and this is what the back looks like. So this piece of wood is going to help us reinforce the strength of the frame. So you want this nail just to go through the backer and the frame. If it goes through the map, it should be okay because we put a border around it. But in order for this to reinforce the frame, you want it to be nailed into the frame. So adding those nails into the back should be enough to keep the frame in place. But you can also use a nail gun and shoot nails into the side to kind of tighten up those miters, but this is actually nice and strong. And this is what the final product will look like. Okay, my arms are tired. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this tutorial has taught you how you can create and customize your very own wooden map. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Christina from Woodshop. That way I can see all the beautiful things that you create with your Glowforge. Bye.